So in this last module, we'll cover some of the details of the historical development of the debate in the early 80s. We'll talk a little bit about the use of those terms, motivations for the positions, at least in terms of the two combatants that we'll be reading. And then I'll end by making some comments about the practical versus theoretical differences in this debate. Quimbliss suggests that while the ideas behind the internalism-externalism debate have long played a part in philosophy, the framework for the debate was really set in the last 45 years or so. Now, he says that D.M. Armstrong first coined the word externalism in his 1973 book, Belief, Truth, and Knowledge. This, however, is not true. Armstrong does use the word externalism in his 1973 book to describe his view about the nature of non-inferential perceptual knowledge. However, he attributes that term to O'Hare, nor is Armstrong the first person to forward a reliabilist view. Frank Ramsey has a note among his 1929 papers, which I'm not really sure counts as formulating a theory, and Armstrong himself cites Watzling's 1954 paper as his inspiration, in fact his source of conversion to reliabilism. Armstrong even notes that Plato appears to consider the view in the Mino and to reject it. As Armstrong uses the term externalism, it refers to non-inferential knowledge. He holds that such beliefs are epistemically praiseworthy solely because of the nature of the mechanisms that cause them. He likens the perceptual system to a thermometer. So for him, the externalist account allows one to understand our most basic beliefs as justified in ways that do not require an epistemic regress, and thus it constitutes an alternative account of basicness, which he's quite explicit about in that book. As we know, Alvin Goldman has advocated an externalist view of empirical knowledge in his 1967 paper, A Causal Theory of Knowledge, and in his 1979 paper, he outlines an externalist theory of justification in what is justified belief. The scope of his theory, of course, is much broader than Armstrong envisions. In fact, it's broader than many, in fact, it's broader than many of the early reliablists, broader than Dredsky, who again limits his theory to de re non-inferential perceptual beliefs, and Armstrong, who limits his to non-inferential perceptual beliefs. However, like Armstrong, Goldman's view is a reliablist view. Now, like Descartes, Bonjour and other contemporary internalists view justification as necessarily stemming from first-person conscious, or at least implicit and potentially conscious experiences regarding one's awareness of the relationships between beliefs. For Bonjour, this involves seeing inferential connections. For the foundationalists, it involves subjective certainty or indubitability. In 1980, Midwest Studies in Philosophy published their two classic papers as part of a collected volume of papers associated with the conference. Goldman's paper, The Internalist Conception of Justification, and Bonjour's paper, The Externalist Theories of Empirical Knowledge, are classics in the field and certainly stimulated a great deal of debate about internalism versus externalism for oh, over a decade afterwards. In their articles, they debate the ability of internalist and externalist conceptions of justification to address traditional worries about knowledge as understood from a subjective perspective. For Bonjour and for many other contemporary internalists, they motivate their view, that is their view that justification necessarily stems from first-person awareness of the relations between beliefs, by appealing to ideas of epistemic responsibility or rationality. So they argue that failure to form beliefs using first-person awareness of the relationships between beliefs makes one epistemically irresponsible or irrational. Now in their respective papers, both Goldman and Bonjour are going to characterize the traditional epistemic project as discovering if one's subjective standards for right reasoning do in fact lead one to form true beliefs. Goldman argues that the traditional project cannot succeed. Bonjour argues that the absent the constraints inherent in the traditional project, belief, no matter how reliable, is fundamentally irrational. I think that it's important to realize that most discussants in the debate portray the positions as radically different, and in some sense the views are radically different. Different in terms of the sorts of information and the degree of metacognitive appraisal that is necessary in order for particular sorts of beliefs to have epistemic warrant. However, while the two views definitely contradict one another regarding the epistemic status of certain classes of beliefs, the choice of externalism or internalism wouldn't necessarily result in radically different epistemic practices overall.
finally, though Coimbliff doesn't mention it in his brief introduction, not all people view the motivations for internalism as stemming from the idea of epistemic choice or epistemic duty. Coney and Feldman, for example, argue that the internalism-externalism debate is largely about the supervenience of epistemic properties. 